The following KQED production was produced in high definition. The world's oceans cover 71% of the globe, yet for all their vastness, they are the least explored and probably least understood regions of the planet. The Earth is covered with water for the most part, and we know about that thin little strip right along the coastline. We don't really know much at all about the rest of the ocean. We take ships across the surface of the ocean, but we have no idea about the four kilometers beneath us. We actually are now at a point in the 21st century where we're just beginning to study the blue part of our planet. We actually lack the tools for most of our lifetime and then most of human history to actually go into the ocean, three quarters of Earth, and find out how it really works there. Even with the best modern technology, underwater researchers have been limited in how much they can explore. To better understand the entire marine environment, researchers are now placing high-tech electronic tags on a variety of pelagic or open ocean animals. By following their movements, these scientists are able to get a true big picture of our watery world. Well, the view is a pretty comprehensive and integrated one because Different animals have different um, life histories and different behaviors. So we've got, um, you know, animals have speciated into different ecological niches and occupy different habitats. They all forage in different ways as well, and they all have different behaviors, and we can aggregate that data and, and we get, you know, start to fill in the pixels of what's happening within, uh, you know, a, a giant grid of the ocean. And it's done um, through this uh, massive flotilla of, of um, I don't want to say cheap labor, but the animals are out there doing doing uh, you know, what would cost humans um, you know billions of dollars to do. Marine scientists from NOAA, Stanford, and the University of California Santa Cruz are leading a team of animal trackers on a project called TOP, or Tagging of Pacific Predators. The researchers have tagged more than 2,000 individual animals from 22 key species. Using satellite technology, scientists are following these animals as they crisscross the ocean. Their electronic tracks forming a web-like roadmap that can lead marine scientists to the vital regions of the ocean. We have the same technology that's born out of your chips and your computer and your communications devices and your cell phone and your satellite phone. Our tags and their ability to log data are giving us this remarkable new view of what's the hot place in the ocean. The tags can help locate important breeding sites, migratory corridors, and the fertile feeding grounds that marine life needs to flourish. At the same time, the tags also collect a broad spectrum of environmental information. With the oceans being taxed as never before from threats ranging from overfishing to climate change, unlocking the mysteries of the deep may be the key to managing and ultimately preserving entire marine ecosystems. This technology basically provides the basic facts that the policymakers need to figure out how to come up with management restrictions and incentives that ensure that we are able to harvest an, a, an adequate amount but, but prevent us, hopefully, from over-harvesting the species to extinction. So we are reaching an absolute crisis point of where our production is already stretching the limits of the ecosystem. One animal facing critical decline is the bluefin tuna. Lead scientist Barbara Block and her team are now scrambling to tag bluefins in order to get a better idea of how to protect this magnificent and valuable species. Now here are some of our largest tuna species, some of the most prolific animals on Earth. An individual tuna has millions of eggs, and we're talking about whether these animals might be listed in the coming years as endangered species, all right? So this is not a humpback whale who only has one calf. It's not a shark that might have a few pups. These are tunas, all right? Once thought to be so prolific that we could never take all the tunas out of the sea. 
In order to tag a bluefin, scientists first have to catch them the old-fashioned way on a rod and reel. After bringing the huge fish on board, a tag is surgically inserted and the fish is released. When this bluefin is finally caught again, the lucky fisherman can nail the tag back for a big reward. This is an archival tag, and all this is is a data logging tag. It's literally the same as taking a computer, a laptop, and sticking it inside your local tuna. The way the tag works is it takes data from four sensors. So we have a temperature sensor up here, a thermistor. We have this fluorescent light, and what's happening there is photons from the sun or the moon are coming in, exciting this dye, and then a photodiode is amplifying the signal down here. We then record a light signal. We have a pressure sensor, and we have a thermistor inside the tag to measure body temperature. Four sensors waking up as often as every four seconds. So what we have here is a probe now moving through the ocean, taking extraordinary oceanographic data, and then collecting it. Scientists need to retrieve these tags in order to collect the data. For animals that spend more time at the surface, researchers can use satellite tags that are capable of communicating directly to the science labs in real time. At Playa Grande Beach in Costa Rica, top researchers are placing these satellite tags on nesting sea turtles. For more than 100 million years, giant leatherback turtles like this one have laid their eggs on beaches around the Pacific. Now, because of fishing nets, hunting, and loss of nesting habitat, experts worry the leatherback may be running out of time. But understanding how these animals live may help save them. The status of the of sea turtles, leatherback turtles in the Pacific is in doubt. It's probably the most critically endangered population of sea turtles on the planet. At Playa Grande, where we do our work, this is the considered to be the last viable nesting beach for leatherbacks in the entire you know, East Pacific. Um, it's more or less the, 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 the Alamo for Eastern Pacific leatherbacks. As the turtle lays her eggs, she goes into a trance-like state. The researchers use this time to strap a backpack-like tracking device onto her. And the harness is designed to uh, stay with the animal for about a year to a year and a half, and they will get anywhere between 80 to 85,000 transmission. Uh, so a, a female turtle uh, throughout the course of her lifetime may lay on, uh, on the order of 2,000 or more eggs. Um, of that entire production, perhaps only two uh, will make it to adulthood. So we want to ensure that we do whatever we can to protect the nesting beach where the turtles are concentrated, but also to understand how turtles move during, these, during their internesting interval. Soon these big front flippers are going to start throwing sand. That's exactly when At 3.30 a.m., she finishes laying her eggs. Then, with the satellite tag secured, she heads back to the open sea. Tracking her, we'll learn more about her watery world. Tomorrow morning, we'll be able to turn on the computer and uh, get a good idea of uh, what her next move is and watch her for the next uh, year and a half to two years. It's awesome. In early 2008, researchers also used satellite technology to follow a great white shark. Released by Monterey Bay Aquarium, the young shark carried two tracking tags. One recorded information about the environment. The other, called a smart position only tag, transmitted its coordinates when the shark's dorsal fin broke through the surface. The progress Top and Barbara Block's lab made in tagging technology opened this portal for researchers to study one of the most mysterious creatures in the ocean. With the tags that she and her group are using, they can tell us where the shark has been every 15 seconds over a three month, six month period what the water temperature was, what the depth was, what the light level was, so we can understand what the shark was doing and with what and with whom. The tag then is released by a magnesium dissolving link that floats to the surface, and the tag then sends information up to a satellite. Just like that, the information is sent to Monterey, where the scientists at Stanford can study it. While the tag transmitted its signal, scientists and web servers alike tracked the shark's journey. They were amazed to see that in the first 44 days, the shark had already traveled roughly 1,200 miles, all the way from Monterey 
to the tip of Baja, Mexico. The information gathered by TOP is opening up a whole new world, proving there is much more to discover about the planet we live on. I think we're on the verge of a virtual information explosion of our understanding of the oceans. And maybe it's at the 11th hour and at the last minute, but we are getting it. The, the, the use of this tagging technology is giving us a, a finally an ability to map the life of the ocean under the ocean. So I think the more that we can give the public the facts, they will respond. If you inform and inspire the public, you will empower the public to respond and frankly um, act in its uh, goodwill and future. Keep Quest free. Discover more and donate at kqed.org slash quest.